Hey everybody, this is Craig from OrgSpring, and in this video we are going to give you a quick introduction to the Salesforce CRM. It's a great product for nonprofits, and with the Salesforce Foundation donation, you get 10 licenses for free. Now this, not, uh, this may not sound like much, but uh, this is a $20,000 a year program that you are essentially getting for free from the Salesforce Foundation. It's a very powerful CRM to track your contacts and your donors and other information. And it's used by Fortune 500 companies and it's used by little mom and pop shops and it's used by millions of companies in between. So we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what Salesforce is and in general what a CRM is and what it can do. And more particularly, we're going to talk about what Salesforce can do for you as a nonprofit and why it's important to use and how it can help improve your efficiency as a nonprofit. So those are the two things we'll learn in particular in, in this presentation. And when we're done, we could jump into a few more modules and discuss the particulars of how to navigate Salesforce if you're just starting out uh, using the system. So before we can understand what Salesforce does, it helps to understand exactly what a CRM is. A CRM is a Contact Relationship Manager. C stands for Contact, R stands for Relationship, M stands for Manager. Sometimes people will substitute the word Customer for the C, but in reality, they're all contacts. We will collect contact information for uh, any of our contacts, any of our customers' leads, donors, foundations, things like that. So CRM stands for Contact Relationship Manager. And really this is a system which is going to help us take our contacts and manage the relationships that we have with those contacts. And as a nonprofit, there are many different types of relationships. And we'll talk about that briefly. So as a nonprofit, one of the things you're going to track is contact information. And there are different types of contacts that you might have as a nonprofit. For example, you might track uh, people like your staff or your employees or your volunteers. You might also track people outside of your organization and follow up with their contact information. For example, you might have a local representative like a senator or a congressman. You might also have people who are donors to your organization, people who donate money or gifts in kind that you want to keep track of and follow up with them or maybe send them letters of thanks every now and then. You'll also have just everyday regular people who you might come in contact, the people who your organization serves. You might also track additional people, not necessarily related to your organization, but people that you want to make contact with sometime in the future. So you're going to track things like phone numbers and addresses, names, birth dates, things like that. Any type of information that you might want to keep track of that might help you understand who that person is and how to reach them. In addition, you're going to track the relationships between you and that contact. For example, I mentioned just a moment ago donors. The relationship that might exist between you and a donor is a financial one. So you might track which people are making donations and which people aren't making donations. For the people who are making donations, you might track how much money they've donated over a certain period of time or when the last time was that they did donate. This can help you analyze and manage the data that you have for these people. For example, you can run reports that tell you when the last time somebody donated was. If it's been a long time, that might warrant a phone call from you or a letter saying, hey, we haven't heard from you in a while. Why don't you reach out and give us a buzz? Or why don't you take the time and reach out and contact that person and see if they're willing or able to continue donating to your organization? So by tracking this kind of information, you can develop relationships between your customers or your donors or foundation executives. And you can continue those relationships by understanding the time between contacts and understanding the relationship between contacts. And this can help you be both more efficient and also increase donations coming into your organization. When a lot of people start using Salesforce, particularly nonprofit organizations, they're a little bit overwhelmed by the data, entering data into the system, pulling data out of the system, and just understanding how they can make it work for them. So really it helps to understand how a CRM works and what exactly you're doing with this data. 
So generally, it helps to think of like an old library card catalog. If, if you're old enough to know what that is, uh, you know that data is stored in records. For example, if you're tracking a contact or information on a contact, each contact has one record. And you might collect information on that one contact. Again, things like name, address, phone number, fax number, email, things like that. All of that gets entered into one card in the system, be it a digital card, of course, in Salesforce. And that is filed away. Salesforce lets you display information graphically. So if you were looking on that card, you would just see a list of information. If you're looking at that library card, say, it would just be a text list of all the different information. And if you wanted to change that information, you would get an eraser and you'd wipe out the person's phone number and then you change it, you put it back into the system. Well, Salesforce works in the same way, albeit digitally. So you store records and each contact has one record in the system. And when you call up that person's record, it displays graphically on your screen. And you could see here in this picture an example of how that information is displayed. It looks a lot like a library card catalog, except it's digital. You'll see here we have a photo for the person, and this person is called Craig Tester. It's not a real person, it's just a test version of me. We can even track social media, like you can see here. We have an icon for LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and a cloud score. We have a picture of that person. And then we have some general contact details, something you would see, again, like in a library card, the name, the account name, which is another way of saying the company they work for, that person's title, their Twitter username. We see phone, email, website, address information, some additional information that we track. And this is just a part of what you can see. There's actually much more information. We could track activity on that person. Every time we've made a phone call or sent an email to that person, we could track it in the system. We can track opportunities. And this particular fake person uh, is a foundation executive, and they might be someone who might be able to give us a grant. So we can track our interactions with them. If we write a grant, we could put the grant in the system and track when we've sent that person a grant and what their response might have been. So there's a lot of different ways to track information, and all of this information gets entered into one card, and that one record gets entered into the system, and it can be called on. We can also then track and manage this data. And managing the data is really the power of a CRM. It gives us the ability to report on the data. For example, we mentioned before, reporting is real important when you start talking about donations or tracking, following up with donors. You might be doing a capital campaign for your organization where you, try, you want to try to raise, say, $100,000 this year. And you need to reach out to all of your donors. And you're going to start with your donors who have donated high money amounts. So you can go into your system if you've been tracking this data and say, give me a list of everyone who's donated $10,000 or more in the last five years. You can pull that information. And by using that information, you can develop a list where you can go out to those people first and say something like, I know you've donated money in the past. We're doing a capital campaign. Here's the things that we need now. And it would be great if you could donate. And you could start with that list and make a very concerted effort to go after people you know who have been friendly to the organization in the past. In a similar way, you can also report on people who have not donated, people who have maybe joined events, people who have come to your office or have, have gone to some type of event you've done, but have not yet donated. You could pull a report of people who have been interested in your organization but who have not yet donated money and you can make a concerted effort to reach out to those people, tell them all the benefits of the service that your organization provides and why it's important that they donate. So these are ways that you can report on the data in the system. So the data that you track can then be reported on and you can use that reported information to actually benefit the organization. So we talked a little bit about using Salesforce and what Salesforce can do for you. And we're going to get into that in a little bit more detail here. And we're actually looking at a live version of the photo that you saw earlier, which is the contact version of Craig Tester, the test version of me. So you'll see here we have some general contact detail like we saw before, name, account name, title, phone, address information. We're also tracking things like, what does this person do? Well, for example, this person is a grant maker. He works at a private foundation. His 
interest or industry is community development, and he's the executive director. He is the person who will be making decisions on grants. Now, you can click on any of these things and change it. You'll see here I could change from contact grant maker. I could say he's a regular nonprofit or he's a for-profit company. I could change the type of grant maker that he is. Maybe he works for a federal agency or a state agency or he's just an in, in public foundation. And then I could also change the title. Maybe he's not executive director. Maybe he is the grant administrator. And we could change that and track all that information. And then later on in the system, for example, we could run a report and say, show me everyone who's a grant administrator. In this way, as you make contact with different people as you're working, you could run reports and send out a letter just to grant administrators to update them on what your organization is doing. You could also send out a letter to everyone who's given you a grant and let them know what you're doing and how their money has been affecting your organization and the people you serve. Like I mentioned before, there's different things that you can track. For example, you can track opportunities, and an opportunity might be a grant. You might track a grant opportunity that you have, how much money that is, how much money is going to come into the organization. You could also track things like campaigns. For example, you might be doing a capital campaign, and you might track how you've reached out or how many people you've reached out to and what the response has been. Uh, and those are things that you could track on a month-by-month -month or a year-by-year -year basis. For example, you might do the same event year after year. You might have an annual event you've been doing for 10 years. Well, if you start tracking that data, you can track which year's events have done better. And as you change things with those events, you can understand which changes make the most impact to your organization. You could also track accounts. And Salesforce account is the same thing as a company. And we'll learn more about the data, or I should say, uh, the jargon used by Salesforce. But for example, you can come in here and you can look at a company and you could track different information about this company. So you could track information like the name of the company, the website. You could even track things like you would find in uh, something like Foundation Center. You could track the amount of money they reported, their foundation code, how you found them. You could track their EIN, their exemption status, their annual budget, total assets, and total giving. And this is great information. Let's see if I could find a contact in my system. We'll just type one for example. Let's look at the Pittsburgh Foundation. And you'll see here the last income they reported was 899850 so just under a million dollars. So this is a good example. So let's say that this is a grant making institution and you're looking for a $2 million grant for your organization. Well, their income is only $899,000 per year. There's a pretty good chance they're not going to be making a $2 million grant because it's more money than they make in a year. So in doing this, what you could do is keep track of foundations and their assets and their income. And you can use that to filter down a list of organizations that would be beneficial to you. So for example, let's just take a look at reports. And we're going to do an income report. So we're going to say, let's look at, and this is a, a report that we made here, let's look at nonprofits in the US with an annual income between $100,000 and $1 million. We're gonna click on this report and it's gonna show us a list. And here is a list by last income reported. And here are all the nonprofit foundations. It tells us the lead source is directly from the IRS. It gives us their address as well, along with the first name contact at the organization. And this is a list that we imported from the IRS directly of all the nonprofit organizations, but we filtered it by income. So for example, we wanted to look at Organizations that have more than $100,000 income per year, but less than a million dollars income per year. These might be potential grant sources for us, small grant sources. And you could see all of these places listed by the amount of money. If we go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see organizations that have smaller amounts. We had a minimum of $100,000. So you might want to look through here and pull out the ones that have foundation in the name, and those might be places that you could apply for a potential grant. Now doing this is a great source of potential grant funding. You could download this list from the IRS for free, import it into your Salesforce organization, 
uh, database and then report on this information. And this is a great way for you to get a free source of potential grant sources. For example, clicking on any of these, so let's look at the Living Way Christian Fellowship. We click on that and we can get information about this organization. You'll see here Foundation Code 16, which I believe relates to churches. So there's a lot of different ways you can use Salesforce to report, and there's a lot of different ways you can use Salesforce to work for your organization. These are the basics of Salesforce. There are a lot of other things that you can do with Salesforce, and we're going to get into it topic by topic. We're going to start off in the first module of the Salesforce training discussing the jargon of Salesforce. And then in later editions, we're going to tell you how to slice and dice data, how to import data, how to use data for your organization to make it more efficient, to raise more funds both offline and online, and to be able to track data and contacts more efficiently. Thanks for joining us for this presentation, just an intro to Salesforce and what it can do for your organization. We look forward to seeing you in future modules.